This is a podcast interview for the Six Swans and their devoted sister. This is part one of interviewing Killian Heilsberg with Nick Green. Alright, so, um, what is uh, your film about? Um, it, this, this current one is uh, a kinestasis animation. It's sort of similar to what um, Ken Burns used for, uh, like, baseball and, and um, Civil War and all yeah. that. Um, Six Swans and Their Devoted Sister. And it's um, basically a fairy tale. It's a little bit dark. It's not, you know, your usual sort of Disney version. It's one of the original sort of um, how they used to teach children about morality and ethics and choices and, and you know consequences when you aren't nice to people. What uh, what genre would you consider this? Fairy tale, Fairy tale. Um, uh, but you know a little dark so it's sort of drama. What made you want to turn this into an animation film? <sighs> it, it, it's, it's, it's interesting we, we're right now working with the second years on um, their artist statements and of course that makes me just sort of constantly have to revisit what's my expectations, yeah. what do I want to be as an artist, blah 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 and I'm rather fond of, of animation mostly because, and I think it's best put in, Barry J.C. Purvis wrote a book on uh, stop motion animation, and one of the interviews with a, a stop motion animator is he said, I wanted to be a performer, but I didn't want to be in front of camera. So I became an animator because then I could perform through the figures. And um, I, I, I started out as an actor, but I'm not really interested in performing on camera anymore. As a matter of fact, it, it reanimates me for sort of freak out. I mean, I still do it, I still enjoy it, but it's not my thing. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of weird sometimes to look at the paper and realize that that paper actually has a mood yeah. and it starts doing things organically on its own. So to me, it's the closest right now that I come to creating actual magic. How is this, uh, how is this story being told? Uh, it's narration. As a matter of fact, John is one of the narrators, and um, so is Kelsey Struve. We wanted to have, uh, originally I was thinking I wanted it to be like a mom telling a, a good night story, and then I realized, wow, this is a slit your wrist kind of good night story, we don't really want that. Um, so we opted to do a large scale audition, which was kind of cool, we had like 26 people come in and audition, which was great, I was sort of surprised that we had that many. And um, we chose two voices, one male, one female, because the story is kind of balanced gender-wise, you know, y even though the main character's a female, uh, but really a lot of the environmental factors are masculine, so it's, it's a very shared intergender sort of storytelling. What made you choose narration over character voices? It's storytelling, and the, the aesthetic is a mobile storybook, so it's not the right it's not that specific kind of storytelling, and I think that um, sometimes the character voices come out more in the images than it will in the narration. At least I hope so. Uh, How did you go about casting all these people? Um, we we had people in. There were we actually had we we had just planned on one night of auditions, so we had it turned out three different groups of people because we had too many people to accommodate at one point and then there were a couple people we had to take on later and um, Monica was in one, Eddie was in another and I did one in the office and each one of us taped and, and videoed it and then we got together and we watched all of them we sort of culled through one of the first things that we were looking for is, is um, just the tone the way people sound um, and do those sounds go together with the other person? Um, we ended up having callbacks with a few people and then finally determined um, Jonathan and Kelsey, partially because their voices blended better than anybody else's. Not that the other voices don't blend, but the two voices worked the best together and were the least jarring when you change them over. Um, but also partially just because of the, some of the interpretive nuances that they brought to it. Uh, for instance, I mean, I'm not telling tales out of school, especially with Jonathan sitting in the room, but Kelsey's voice sounded very young, and so I had to bring her up a little bit so that she carried a little bit more of the gravitas that I was looking for. But Jonathan's voice carried too much gravitas, so I had to bring him down so that there was that play, but when the two of them came to about the same level, there's a really nice back and forth. Um, 
Would you uh, consider working with voice actors again for Flashpoint? Sure. Okay. Um, how far along is the production? Are you? Um, we are. We have two days left of shooting. Um, we have um, the voiceover is already cut together, so we have a pretty good idea of the time. Um, the composer is working on the music, and he has a deadline of the 23rd of May to get me at least some sort of idea of music. I'm going to be getting the footage to the editor by the 10th of May. He's planning on having it cut by the first week of June, and we are planning to get it to the sound people then, and hopefully have it finished by the end of the, Ju of the end of July is our goal. So the final parts should be by the end of July. Yeah, we okay. are, uh, and and how far mm -hmm. are we? In it, we have been working on it since, I started pre-production on it myself in December, and um, that was when we were finishing up um, the edit on Positation. So once principal photography was done with that and I turned it over to the editor, <laughs> I had to have something to do, so I started a new project. And then um, that meant we actually started, we did our first test shoot in February. And then we've um, done actual shoots. But then with film two and all the schedules going on, we, we we could have shot quicker had there not been so many things. And those things have to have priority because this is school, this is their work, this is what they're here for. Yeah. So this is a side project, it's extra, and it cannot take precedence over anything else. Yeah.